He had this sadistic look on his face, which was really concerning. So he's walking towards me, and I'm like, uh oh, oh no, oh no, here it comes. I gotta pray for this man. So while I was growing up and being groomed to be the realest goon you ever met, I wasn't really in charge of making major decisions in my life. Which makes a little bit of sense because as a minor, you don't really know what a good decision is from what a bad decision is. The lines could get a little bit blurry. Unless you're a minor in 2022 and you could practically make any major decision in your life at any age without getting questioned for it because if you do get questioned on it, the person questioning you will get cancelled because we live in a clown world and that's not what this video is about. I digress. Those major decisions were made by my parents. For instance, something as simple as what to eat. Now if it were up to me, I'd only eat candy and junk food and drink only soda, f a water. I'm a goon. But my parents being the loving people they are knew for me to grow up to be a healthy boy, I needed a well balanced diet. Another thing could be as simple as what time you go to bed because if it was up to me, I'd probably just stay up the whole night then i start looking like one of those zombies from The Walking Dead. But my parents knew you needed 68 hours of sleep to be considered well rested. I know these decisions might seem so minuscule at a surface level, but believe me, they carry a long term impact. So that's why they made those decisions and I didn't. Oh, but they also had a dark side. And not all their decisions I was 100% down with. And one of them was getting a haircut. Which brings me to the beginning of this story. This story takes place back in the 8th grade, and one thing about me back then was I wasn't really the most attentive student. Honestly, I was a very easily distracted individual. So as you can imagine, anytime I took my exams, I was pretty lost, I ain't gonna lie to you, I flamed out about 85% of the time. Which means, I didn't try hard enough to cheat. So was the second semester of the 8th grade. They give us our report card for the previous semester. I guess they wanted to switch it up a little bit. They wanted us to enjoy the holidays then come back and get the report cards. So anyways, I'm looking at my report card and I instantly know that yep, it's about to be a long day when I get home because one thing you guys don't know about me is that I got some African parents and uh, <laughs> one thing about them is you do not fail an exam because if you do, your ass is gonna get whooped and believe me, I'm very experienced in that. I had a lot of ass whoopings. I remember for the rest of the day, I was so out of it. I wasn't paying attention in class. Well, I mean, I wasn't paying attention in class to begin with. That's why I'm in the situation I'm currently in. But I was just in my thoughts. I'm like, man, I'm too young and delicate for all these ass whoopings. But you know, I got to tough it out like a goon. But you know, I'm, I'm, I'm delicate. You got to treat me like a flower. So I started to think about the best way to mitigate this situation. And the best thing I could think of was to just delay this ass whooping for at least a day. So I devised somewhat of a plan to just pretend like I'm asleep when I get home so my parents don't wake me up when they see my report card. So the plan's in motion, I'm in bed, I'm pretending to be asleep, and I start getting nervous because I'm hearing footsteps getting closer and closer to my door. The door opens, and I hear my dad's voice. He says, I know you're not asleep. Get up and meet me in the living room. He leaves, I open my eyes, and I'm in bed just contemplating life. I'm like, well, uh, this plan didn't work. It was good while it lasted. <laughs> So I meet him in the living room and he sat at a dining area. I definitely didn't want to go over there because I wanted to keep enough distance between both of us so I can have enough room to dock and dodge and run and just escape this ass whooping I was potentially going to get but I can't really escape because I'm still get the ass whooping regardless. So I'm like, hey dad, son, can you explain to me why you failed your exams? Um, because I didn't try hard enough and I know that if I just believe in the heart of my cards that I can succeed. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. This is not Yu-Gi-Oh. What am I talking about? So basically, he's just there telling me how disappointed he is and just telling me all that parental stuff to just make me feel bad and think about my decisions of not passing my exams. In the midst of him scolding me, I cut him off and I'm like, hey, yo, dog, am I finna get this ass open or not? Because I ain't with all this talking, man. Because where I'm from, we get down on some G shit. Okay, I didn't say that because if I did, I probably wouldn't be alive to tell the story. But I did ask if I was gonna get a whooping. So he gets up from his seat and he starts walking towards me. And he had this sadistic look on his face, which was really concerning. So he's walking towards me and I'm like, uh oh, oh no, oh no, here it comes. I gotta pray for this man. He's 
stops in front of me. <laughs> 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 I was so scared because I did not understand why he was laughing, so I just equated it to, I'm probably gonna get the best ass whooping of my life. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, he's in my face, and he tells me this so gently that I'm not gonna get a whooping. I'm gonna get something much worse. A haircut. Now I know it might not seem as much of a big deal, but you gotta understand one thing, I hated getting haircuts. So I guess my parents finally figured out the one thing they could use against me as a punishment for me to do well in school. So fast forward to the barbershop and I'm getting my hair cut. And I ain't gonna lie to you, no I keep it a buck. I was holding back my tears because I'm feeling my hair come off my scalp. Seeing the hair follicles run through my face knowing fully well that in a matter of minutes that I'm not gonna have any hair follicles on my scalp because I will be going bald. And that was my punishment. It was tough and I was emotional. But I toughed it through, because I'm a gangster. So the next day I go to school, and uh, yeah, everybody was laughing at me. It is what it is. It didn't take long for them to put two and two together to realize, OK, one day I got here, the next day I don't. We were just given our report card, so clearly it doesn't take a genius to realize that the haircut was the punishment for failing the exam. <sighs> My life. So with everyone laughing at me and making fun of me, you better believe that that was the last time I ever failed an exam because you know I can't go out like that. And that's when me, as a goon, was born. This is my origin story. <laughs> Man, I can't take myself seriously. So the moral of the story is, don't wait till something you cherish is taken away from you for you to uphold your end of the bargain in whatever situation you're in because you might just end up like me and go bald and people make fun of you. You might question your self-esteem, but you know, that's just life. So for those who made it to the end of this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you can like this video and subscribe to the channel. It really helps. Um, also, you know, comment and tell me one of your embarrassing stories, man. I'd like to read them all. And uh, yeah, let's have that conversation going. So. Uh, to end off, I want to say this. I do apologize for this video coming out this late. Won't happen again. That's on me. But I appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm out. Look at me, oh,